This video will be all about power supplies. If you've been building PCs for a while and know what you're doing, this will probably not be for you. It's a bit rambly and I'm sorry about that, but it should contain all the information to help you avoid costly mistakes. I am going to talk about mostly used PSUs as opposed to buying brand new. This includes what you should look out for when making a purchase decision and how to test your unit before plugging it into your PC and why it's vitally important to do this sort of checks. Now granted PSU blowouts aren't a common occurrence but I assure you they do happen. Until now I've managed to lose one high-end GPU and two motherboards with one of them being a Rampage 5 Extreme and I suspect it also degraded my 5960X Extreme Edition CPU. Combined well over a thousand pounds of damage over the last 10 years or so. In this video I will not focus on the size of the PSUs and what you need for any given configuration. There are a myriad of good calculators online from different PSU brands that will give you good advice alongside a lot of other videos on how to determine your PC's power needs. Some of the advice here probably draw some ire with respect to health and safety, but if you just follow along and use some common sense you will be alright. But first a proper disclaimer, please wear thick insulating gloves when handling a PSU and always assume that the capacitors are charged unless you took specific steps to discharge them. Also latest gloves like a I am wearing here are not enough, I just know for a fact that everything is properly discharged. The reason why I'm not gonna go into how to discharge capacitors using resistors is that I feel that it is too risky for the average user and I don't think it will yield any additional benefit regardless. If you don't feel comfortable you can skip opening up the unit and perform everything else and it will be okay. Worst case scenario might get an unstable build but no damage will be done if the voltages are within range. Right, let's ease into this with the first example which is an air code 600 watts PSU that comes with a 1 6 plus 2 pin PCIe connect. That's right, 600 watts and the most you can power is a 1050 Ti class of GPU. So if you paid good money for this, I'm sorry you've been had. And while not technically false advertising, it is misleading since they are loping everything together while all you really care about is the 12 volt rail capability of the PSU. I'm going to talk about labels towards the end of the video and why this PSU is so sketchy and there are so many like it. Opening it up and it doesn't look too bad, it's basic for sure but no signs of any capacitor or other damage. So far so good. At this point it's a good idea to blow away the dust with a can of compressed air. You really shouldn't be touching anything anyway, just have a good look around, make sure that none of the capacitors have a dome on them and there aren't any funny smells like burnt plastic. Putting it back together is just a matter of fastening the four screws but can be a bit fiddly, take your time as to not yank out the fan header. And now an example of what a bad PSU looks like inside. The 750 watt unit is very heavy and it was considered a good high end PSU when the decent price tag when it was new. I know what we will find inside as the history is known, someone tripped over the power cord and created a short that led to premature capacitor failure, not really an uncommon thing. Opening it up and the most obvious thing to notice is a burn mark on the plastic and a faint burnt smell. And if something like this greets you, the best course of action is to stop there, put the lick back on and throw the whole thing in the bin, no matter what assurances the seller gave you that the PSU is okay to be used. Most won't quite be this damaged, but they will have one or two bad capacitors, which are these cylindrical looking things, and they have an easy way to see if they are good or not. If you spot a dome on the top, that means that it's bad. This doesn't mean that it will not work at all, it just means it will not be within spec, and for power delivery that is a no-go. Next, you can either use a voltmeter as I I'm doing here or one of those dedicated PSU testers. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen. But unless you test a whole bunch of PSUs on a regular basis, I suggest going for a voltmeter is far more versatile as a tool. And it's inexpensive since one like this is under about seven pounds or euros, dollars, whatever, of eBay. And it will be useful in other scenarios while the PSU tester only does one thing. In order to start the PSU without it being connected to the PC, you will need a paper clip or a small length of wire. This will not electrocute you, but it's not a bad idea to wear gloves regardless, just in case the unit is faulty and bridge the green wire in the 24 pin connector with any black wire. And if all the wires are black, then just bridge the 4th and 5th pins on the clip side of 24 pin connector, counting from the side without the breakaway portion. Next you'll need to measure the voltage that the PSU is providing. The yellow wire should be plus 12 volts, the red plus 5 and the orange plus 3.3 with all the 
black wires being ground. I will splash up on the screen the ATX standard. Ignore any references to negative voltages, they are not something I will be covering in this video and you don't need to concern yourself with them because they are no longer relevant. As long as your PSU is within those defined ranges, you are good to go. I really think that these cheapest chips PSUs do have their place and if you are using something like an Athlon, Celeron or the like without a dedicated GPU then they will work just fine as long as you recognize their limitations. main gripe with them is that they overcompensate by running the 12 volt fan at full tilt all the time without any control whatsoever and it makes them really really noisy. If you really must use one of them you usually got three choices. You can live with it, you can change the fan with the higher quality one which is what I usually do, just make sure that you don't spend more on the fan that the unit is worth or in very specific cases you can rewire the fan to the 5 volt rail. If you are still watching this video please don't do that. In a moment we will be testing the voltages here and it is clear that both the 12 volts and the 5 volts line are way out of spec. Probably not enough to cause damage just yet but it would be a foolish risk to install this in a PC. I know this will cause instability when any sort of load is applied to the system. Personally I would suggest going for a proper budget PSU, something that is brand new calling 600 watt with two 6 plus 2 PCIe connectors that is quiet and performant for the price and will provide more than enough on the 12 volt rail to support anything up to a 3060 Ti without breaking the bank. If you need even more for a couple of more pounds than the 700 watt variant with the 4 2 plus 6 pins will most likely be more than enough for the vast majority of users out there. In a pinch I will use this on RTX 3070 or non overclocked RTX 3080. But by the time you spend that much on a GPU I doubt you'll be pinching pennies on your PSU. These don't have any fancy features, no RGB, heck they don't even have an on off bottom but they will mostly deliver on the promise. Notice also that this has an 80 plus sticker. This is not necessarily an indication that it is a great PSU but it is definitely a step in the right direction. Alternatively a PSU from a more premium brand such as this Corsair might appeal to a lot more people due to the name recognition and that's fine but don't just assume that because you heard of it the second hand one you just bought is a ok. You should always do your due diligence and check it before sticking it in your system. Them. The nice thing about name brands though is that you don't need to add any fudge factor to the specs they give you when sizing what kind of PSU to use in your build. Now on to the lowest of the low, well almost. This FSP unit is only 250 watt but at least the label is honest, more on that in a bit. actually ended up using this in a 3400G build without the GPU and since that APU is only 65 watts it worked fine but looking back on the decision I think I went a bit on the ragged edge. I think this would be a lot more at home in a 3000G or or even a mythical Celeron system with 35 to 45 watts or so. Now we come to the actual worst of the worst. This is a massive air quotes 500 sort of watts in fantasy land maybe, eBay special garbage level PSU that I don't think anyone should ever use ever. This one also runs its fan at 12 volts constantly even though there is absolutely no PCIe support. In my opinion this is a great example of false economy. Do not buy this. I have once used one in a build because I got it in a bundle or something and didn't want to turn it into e-waste but I did put it as zero on the bill of materials and informed the buyer that it is a freebie without any PCIe support that is basically thrown in. Funny enough because it is so limited in the amount of devices you can connect to it unless you try to run something like a I don't know, Core i7 with integrated graphics it will probably be fine. I Although do not expect the longevity to be more than a year or two. Most likely the over F fan will start crunching first so you will have to bin it early. Avoid paying anything for this sort of thing, even a fiver is too much. And finally if you can afford it this is what I would go for as a second hand option if you can find it. Bear in mind the PSUs have good residual value so finding something like this for cheap is not impossible just unlikely. The bad news is that new, before the shortage it was about £120 and is now closer to about £170, that's 200 plus in dollars, but it does come with more than enough power for even a prosumer and a hefty 10 year warranty so if you think about it the investment pays off as you will ferry it from build to build. If you are buying second hand the warranty unfortunately isn't transferable but I'm pretty sure you're still gonna get a good 5-6 years out of it if it's in a working state. Expect to pay around £70 for a good working second hand example. I'm using this EVJ here as a show and tell example but this can easily be substituted for any Seasonic, Antec, NZXT, Super flower thermal take or, or any high-end enthusiast PSU really. And lastly as promised a bit about the labels. 
you would have noticed that some have an 80 plus sticker while others do not. This is just an efficiency rating and most decent PSUs have it. As I mentioned briefly when talking about the calling unit, this is not a requirement, just another plus when making your purchase decision. The most important parameter is the 12 volt rail or rails as most of the power will be provided via those, not the 3 volts or 5 volts ones. Don't worry too much about the number of 12 volts rates any given PSU has, they're usually balanced well enough these days. Most good PSUs will either provide continuous values or continuous plus peak values. This one does not say, so it's probably peak. The issue with that is that there isn't a defined time frame for how long a peak should last, so it's a bit useless. If that is the case, what I usually do is calculate the maximum power draw on the lowest rail. In this case, it's 12 by 15, which is 180 watts, and you subtract about 20% to be safe, giving us a maximum power draw of about 150 watts. Meaning that the actual power rating of this PSU, if it was done correctly, should be about 300 100 watts, not 600 watts. Advertising a lot of amps on the 3 volt and 5 volt rails and adding it to the total is pointless and most likely borderline false advertising because no component that needs 3 or 5 volts will pull that. All power hungry stuff will always use the 12 volt rails. The next label is from the calling PSU and this one lists both continuous and peak abilities. Online calculators will all code the power requirements in continuous. So that is what you should be looking out for. The one thing that I should mention this point is there's no such thing as overspecking your PSU. Worst case scenario it will lose a bit of efficiency due to being underutilized. And no you can't pump too much power through your components, it just doesn't work that way. Meaning that even if you are using integrated graphics this is probably a decent PSU for your build. The third label is from the 250 watts FSP PSU and you can see this one is a bit more honest. This is actually a popular PSU among lower tier system integrators because it is relatively quiet and fit for purpose on lower end builds. But again, I would not advise paying any sort of money for it, but you can use it if you get it for free, for example. Just bear in mind you don't really have any sort of PCIe connectivity, so your upgrade options are very limited. And I think after all of that, you see why a proper PSU costs so much. This one does away with all the marketing trickery and plainly lists a thousand watts on the 12 volt rail. It doesn't try to add other 5 and 3 volt rails or, or try to do anything dodgy to make it look good on paper. Also that LT plus gold rating is not bad at all but you are paying a pretty penny for it and at a thousand watts I'm not really sure if it makes that much sense to go over say a bronze unit. The bottom line is that in most cases the price is the thing that is the most off-putting. The only other edge case I can think of is if you find a good deal on an HP, Dell, Lenovo or any other PSU that is from a large system integrator that seems to have excellent specs and a great price. It is my experience that most PSUs like this will have some sort of customization that makes them completely unusable in a normal PC, in the worst case scenario with different pinouts on the various connectors, and on the best case scenario the overall size and shape of the unit itself and the fixing points are deliberately changed so to make it very difficult to install it in anything else than is designated case. Unless you know you need that exact PSU model for the pre-built you already own, I suggest not taking the risk and looking for a more suitable power supply. And that's it, happy hunting for your next power supply, see you in the next one.